Good morning. This is the Durham Jazz Workshop Meet the Artist interview. I'll be back with our guests in a flash. Okay, everybody, I'm back, as I said, and here we have our guest for today, uh, st saxophonist Stephen Riley. He's the other guy with the beard, the one with the dark beard, and the clean shaven guy. There is Ernest Pianist, Ernest Turner. And these folks are gonna be appearing twice at Sharp Nine, um, once on the 10th as a duo, and then as a quartet, including uh, drummer Jason Marsalis the next night. Um, I think there are two shows for the second night, if I remember correctly. Yep. Could be. But gentlemen, I was thinking yesterday, I was trying to remember how long ago I heard that you all were planning to do this duo CD. And the figure I came up with was three years ago, but just Masomenus. Does, when did the impulse start for this uh, duo CD that you're putting out on Seller Live? Uh, you want me to go, Ernest, or you want to go? What do you say? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you do it. Well, I was just going to say, um, uh, I've been with Steeplechase Records now, you know, for like 15 years or so. Um, I guess, I, how long have I known you, Ernest? How many, how many years? Uh, it's about 16, 15, 16 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So maybe I've been with Steeplechase even longer than that, actually. Uh, but not much longer because I had just gotten my record deal with Steeplechase just before meeting Ernest, maybe a year before. So let's say 17 years or 16 years. But anyway, uh, I had wanted to do, I, I started to do, I've done a few duet projects on Steeplechase. Um, also like three actually. And, uh, and actually <laughs> one of those, I really did want to, uh, to do it with Ernest, but we had already done like two quartet records and the label wanted to just kind of do something different and spice it up or whatever and keep it fresh or in their minds at least. Uh, you know, I, I prefer to like keep guys that I play with all the time because we've got a we've got a musical connection together. But uh, anyway, it wasn't it wasn't a battle or anything. I think everything worked out fine. I'm uh, plenty proud of the records that I've made for Stephen mm -hmm. Chase. But uh, anyway, so it was something I was kind of pushing for on that label for a few years. Um, and uh, then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I got the opportunity to record for a different label, which we're talking about today, Seller Live Records. And uh, I think, you know, right away I saw my opportunity, you know, to do this, mm -hmm. um, you know, because, you know, I think from day one, the first time me and Ernest ever played, together i we barely knew each other's names you know um i actually remember i was playing a soprano saxophone and uh and i cannot remember what tune we played but we just played for like five minutes or so you know seven minutes you know and and it just like it was like yeah <laughs> it just clicked you know and that was that long ago and and uh now it's that much better you know but anyway so I, I would, I guess I would agree with you, Peter, that, that it's, I've been talking about it. I've been threatening to do this <laughs> for about years, but I would say maybe longer than that. I thought it was yeah. more like four or five, to be honest with you. Um, well, you know, I think what a lot of the viewers don't know, particularly is, is the history of you two guys, that basically Katrina drives Ernest out of, drives Ernest from New Orleans to here. Um, yeah. He ends up in, in his, least favorite town in North Carolina, I think, Greenville. And, <laughs> and um, you guys hook up yeah. and you start playing and there's there's magic there. And that yeah. that's it's it's a weird way for things to happen, but mm. it did. Yeah. Kind of the way they go in this line of work for sure. And uh because we, you know, it didn't not, not to sound corny, but yeah, we we speak a, mu a musical language, you know, and yes. uh, a lot of times that's, uh, that's very personal, you know, and um, uh, I don't know, uh, non-musicians that maybe they wouldn't understand that right away, but I don't know if that's true either. Um, you know, sometimes they, 
that's what they get into. I think, you know, when they, when they're watching a show or something, they, they see the connection going on uh, and the, and the, the, the dialogue, you know, the musical dialogue. Oh. Yeah, I mean, speaking for myself, that's that's true. One from the first time I heard you two playing, and 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 you know, you begin to sense that communication as you're going back and forth and playing with and off each other, and have that a similar vocabulary, and know what to do with each other's imaginations. And for those that haven't heard you two, um, you re people really need to. Uh, get a chance to see you two one or both nights, uh, certainly the first night in duo and then in the quartet, which will be something else yet again. Yeah. yeah. yeah Ernest, yeah, yeah. you have anything to add? No, I mean, Steve kind of nailed all of it. Um, I, I mean, I think the same thing It's, I, I think since we met, he was always big on like trying to get us to record. I mean, I think that was after it could have been after the first time we played together. He's like, man, I got to get you on one of my records. And so I think it's just always been, and I mean, we've always played together since then. So I think it was almost like this was just the, when, when could it happen? Yeah. You know, when is our things going? So yeah, I think when Corey approached him, I mean, I think he got to me pretty soon after Corey approached him. He's like, yeah, man, I really want to do this duo record. Especially when you have somebody who's a musician who runs a record label. You know, they're not really trying to tell you what to do or how to play or who to use. He's just kind of like, yeah, you guys just do what you do and I'll, and I'll put it out, so. What's Corey's last name again? Was uh, it Weeds? Oh, Weeds, yeah. Weed, like W-E-E-D-S, Corey Weeds. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's a Corey Weems too and I get getting Oh, okay. Between the two, yeah. but Corey Weeds. Weeds, yeah. Yeah. So this, this recording took you all the way out to British Columbia. How did, is that where they're based? Or is there some other mysterious yeah. story? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a label out of Vancouver. Um, <clears throat> And, you know, the guy is, uh, Corey is heavily uh, New York affiliated, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think he, he makes routine trips there. And, and like Ernest said, he's also a musician. So he plays saxophone very well. And, uh, and you know, he's an artist in his own right, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, and I guess he's been, he's been running this label a while. I didn't realize how long, but I, I, I think it's close to 20 years. Um, and it started off as a, uh, it started off, it's the reason why it's called Cellar Live, uh, from what my understanding is, there's a club there in Vancouver called Frankie's Jazz Club, mm -hmm. and he still plays there, but I, I believe that's the club, he used to do live records there, and yeah. that's how it started, so he was bringing in like New York guys, you know, every, yeah. every doing live shows there, and uh, recording them, and that was the way it started off, um, now gradually he's he's moved into studio recordings and stuff and i don't think that particular concert series at frankie's jazz club goes on uh although he still you know he works there and, and yeah. just, i don't know what the details are of that but anyway um i might be getting off topic a little bit here oh yeah you were saying <laughs> vancouver <laughs> yeah so anyway what happened was is, is uh um you know, I, I, and I actually talked to Corey for a while too. That's another thing that it took a while for me to yeah. talk to Steeplechase Records and kind of have the two labels communicate with each other. And you know, it's one of those things, man. Where it, it, you know, in hindsight, maybe I didn't have to go to quite so much trouble, but yeah. I didn't. I didn't want one label <laughs> catching me with a record on another label. Oh know, yeah, yeah. Out there. And, and that was the right thing to do. And, and it was very cool. Um, it really did go extremely smoothly, you know. They weren't thrilled about it, you know. But um, Steeple Chase wasn't thrilled about me doing this. But, uh, but they, they're, they're cool. But anyway, um, so anyway, he, uh, he, had a, he, has a, he had started a jazz festival in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. What was that, Ernest Shadbolt? 
Shed. Yeah, yeah, that sounds familiar. Walk at the Shad Bolt Center or something like that. Yeah. 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 And he called it like the Shad Bolt Jazz Walk. Yeah. Yeah. And it was actually the first year of it, I believe. And uh, he had never done it before. Uh, it's funny. He, he had us there to record. And, uh, and he gave me the option to either go there and record or record the record like in Raleigh or New York or something, probably Raleigh, and, uh, and send him the recording and he would put it out, you know, and which is amazing too, by the way. Like that's not something yeah. I could do in this case. Um, so I'm sure that more records that get made with them might be made in that way, which is pretty cool. Yeah. That would um, be easier. It's easier and who knows, you know, I've always had a dream, honestly, of because with Steeplechase, you make your record in one day, you know, and uh, <laughs> you, get, you get like three to eight hours, you know, to yeah. make make an album, a record, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, so, which which I've kind of gotten used to, actually, and I kind of like better now. But um, but anyway, with with this, you know, I, I feel like I might would have the freedom to go in the studio and record for two or three hours and then get it another yeah. day and keep coming at it for a bit which could be a fun way to do it but anyway man i'm probably going on too long um well yeah. just a sh short let me try to shortcut it a bit you ended up doing a lot this was supposed to be live if i remember well, well i think uh at the very beginning we were talking about a live record and i yeah. think you know, what at some point he gave i think he gave me the option to do it one way or the other yeah I think I talked about this with you, Ernest, right? And didn't right. we agree? Didn't we agree that we kind of wanted to do a studio thing? Because yeah. I think we did, but you know. So what did it end up as? So it, it wound up being in a in a studio, actually in, in a house, um, <laughs> very nice house there in in uh, Vancouver. Uh, and but the reason we went to Vancouver too was I made a whole trip out of it, and we did two concerts while we were there, two or three oh. concerts. Good. Uh, while we were there and uh and made an appearance at the at the festival well we played for the festival and uh you know and <laughs> in hindsight too like our last performance at the festival i wish that was recorded <laughs> actually uh, uh, yeah uh, oh well uh yeah but 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 the record came out i i love it you know anyway well that, that's some, someday there may be a live duo recording that you guys will do Oh, I'm sure at some point. Yeah. I'm certain, yeah. There, yeah. certain there will be, yes. Okay, it's getting closer to time to tease people with clips or clipper clips or whatever, but um I've got the set, I've got the the uh the tune list in front of me here. And the one that jumped out at me right away was among my souvenirs, ah. which I haven't heard in a long, long time. Um, and I look back this on just before we got together on online and it was recorded by Connie Francis in 1963 and that's the version I, re I remember but it goes back to the late 20s yeah um and I had I hadn't heard any other any other version of it um and the only other song on on the 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 list that I recognize is Sophisticated Lady um everything else is everything else original or I, I haven't seen a um a uh well, any details on on the yeah. two. Oh, okay okay uh no every everything's not original um two yeah. tunes two two of the tunes on the record are, are originals um and uh let's see that was uh uh there's one called jay yes uh, which is actually dedicated to marcus roberts um mm -hmm. Uh, and and I did that after the fact, actually, because just listening to it, it was it made me think a lot about playing the the sound of his playing yeah. in a way captured in that. But it's called Jay because his his nickname is Jay Master. <laughs> that's that's Marcus's nickname, and we all just call him Jay. You know that that uh -huh. is what, pretty much what you call him in the band. But anyway, so it's dedicated to Jay, and uh, and then uh, the other one uh, is dedicated to Ernest. <laughs> Is that, uh, is that the one that's called Turning? Called Turning, yeah. So <laughs> uh, I sent some titles to Ernest and uh, asked him which one, he, which one he liked, you know, or actually which one he didn't like, and then I put that one out. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, 
Well, I, Ernest has talked very eloquently about how hard a time he has giving titles yeah. to tunes so that the fact that you gave him choices was probably, oh, <laughs> might have been helpful. <laughs> I'm sure. yeah. yeah, yeah, that one, that one had a ring to it, man. I like it. I dig that, that title. Well, I'm, me too. In fact, I think what we'll do is we'll play those two um, because there are originals. And um, oh, just for people that don't know who Marcus Roberts is, Marcus Roberts, the fabulous pianist, played with Wynton Marsalis, I think, back in the day, is the, at Florida State. He teaches yeah. at Florida State. Yeah, he's an art. Yeah. He's on faculty at, at FSU uh, and has an, has an honorary doctorate from them as well. Yeah. And among other honorary doctorates, I believe. Very, very accomplished uh, artist, Marcus Roberts. I've been, I've been in his band working with him uh, over the last 25 years, you know? And uh, he definitely had a profound influence on my development and musically and personally, you know? Yeah. Extraordinary human being, honestly. Um, so yeah, so I thought uh, this is a very fitting time for me to do a tribute to him. Um, so I'm glad it worked out that way. Um, yeah, he's a, he's definitely been a mentor to, to my career. Well, let's hear a little bit of it. Let me uh, play with share screen. Okay. Oh, it's still there, which is nice. Sometimes I'll turn on share screen and what I thought was there it wasn't there. Oh. And... come back yeah oh i know what i need to do i need to talk to this ah there we are that has a really nice new orleans sound to it yeah yeah that's that's really um i would say new orleans music is at the root of of 90 percent of what marcus comes out of you know mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if that figure is correct, but anyway, maybe he, would, <laughs> he might would say fifty percent. I don't know, but uh, but you know, it's good enough for our conversation. It's good, uh, yeah, and he also comes out of gospel heavily. Uh, he played grew up in the church playing. So anyway, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And one one of the things I like about the the teasers on, at least for this CD on on Seller Live. Is they give you more more of a snippet, they give you a minute and a half, and that gives you a chance to get into. You can see, hey, this is where this thing is is headed, not just the you know, yeah. seconds of 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 whatever. Yeah, would have yeah. You with that as well. Nice. Well, then why don't we try going back to Turnin and see what Ernest sounds like. <laughs> in in your mind <laughs> yeah let's see there we go 
So, okay, the last tune had a um, Marcus Roberts sound. This one has an Ernest Turner sound. And what is an Ernest Turner sound? <laughs> uh, hey, Ernest, do you want to talk? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, man. I, said, um, I, I don't know if it has an Ernest Turner sound or not. <laughs> well, I guess it, depends, uh, it probably depends who you ask. Yeah, well, that's why I was asking Stephen. Is oh. how does your how does Ernest music feel to you? What makes it distinctive to you? Oh my God, that's a that's a, maybe a tough question. And if it's too tough a question, that's fine too. A long answer. It's a long answer that I was I'm trying to condense really short. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> you know, <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I think musicians probably, uh, and probably especially jazz musicians, I don't know, maybe other musicians too. Uh, musicians are very selfish, you know, artists are very selfish. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first thing that I, I tend to judge somebody's playing on is how well do I sound when they play? <laughs> <laughs> well, it make me sound, you know? Uh, so yeah, like pretty much like if I have a good night, then everybody was great, you know? <laughs> so that's the first thing, I mean, I'm speaking for myself, so I'm not gonna speak for Ernest. Maybe he don't feel that way at all. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, his music, his playing, um, uh, oh my God, there's so much in there. I mean, really, honestly, uh, and I, you know, when I first met Ernest and we first started playing, I remember we had a conversation after we played that we, I think we talked for about five hours, you know, mm. and at uh, that time, um, he would, we talked about Keith Jarrett for about three hours, mm. you know. And uh, and I remember um, he he was really studying that, you know, um, and it's and that's and it sounded that way, you know, at, at the time mm -hmm. to me to my ears, you know. Yeah. Um, but my God, since then, man, it's like uh, it really is like the entire history of the music, yeah. and and other forms of music uh, all combined into one, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I do actually. I mean, that, I I I can hear that even from my non musician. Uh, point of view, but I mean, this gets back to the, you know that that you guys fit so well together, and you can hear it even in that minute and a half with you getting started uh, doing your thing and him, it it, it, it then blending then blending yeah. together. Well, I mean, that, yeah. I was gonna say it takes a lot of. Uh, I mean, the thing about Steve, and um, because I've only noticed this with a few people. Uh, a lot of horn players get very insecure. Well, not just horn players, but a lot of band leaders get very insecure if they feel like um, somebody else in the band is playing. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's almost like they wanted to fit in whatever, which sometimes that's what's called for to me. But sure. I also have different genres that fits better. Like you're playing pop music. Okay, yeah. Um, but the thing I've noticed and I never liked about 
and why honestly and steve was actually one of the people to kind of tell me to stop doing it why i stopped playing a lot of gigs with people was because you just end up doing that every night where somebody's just like oh well i want you to do this or play this way or yeah and the problem with that is you you end up with really boring sounding bands because you have a band leader that's telling everybody to sound a certain way, not because it's a musical vision. It's really more because of a lack of ingenuity or skill that they have. So they end up basically wanting to be here and trying to push the rest of the band down. And so I mean, when I first played with Steve, and I mean, you're talking about that's 2005. So I mean, I was just coming from New Orleans. I, I mean, I know my playing was probably kind of all over the place. I, I mean, I think in this last 15, 16 years, not once did he say, yeah, you shouldn't do that. Um, now there's been times we've been playing, he'll be like, can you play a little softer mm. or, or it'd be like little subtle suggestions, but, sure. but I've played gigs with people and they'll just flat out say, oh, well, don't do that. Yeah. And once somebody tells me that it's just like, yeah, we're done. Like I'll, yeah, I'll be professional. I'll finish this gig with you, but it's like, this is not what I signed up for. So yeah. I, I, what I'm saying is I think it takes a lot for a, for a musician to be like, I'm fine with you playing the way you play. And, and us figuring out how to put it together versus, no, you're just going to fit to what I do. Yeah. Um, and I think when that actually happens, I think that's in well any musical partnership, when you see the most mm -hmm. actually happen on stage or in a recording, when it's two people that respect each other, and they're just like, okay, you do this, I do this, and we'll just meet in the middle somewhere versus somebody. Uh, I mean, I always like to think about it like, you know, you're playing basketball, like somebody just taking the ball and saying, no. I'm not going to pass. Yeah. I'm just going to. So Steve was always great about that. It was always just like, let's just figure out how to make the way both of us play. Because we have enough commonalities. It's almost like we have enough commonalities, like the Venn diagram. We have such a big commonality mm -hmm. that in the things that we do differently, they don't detract from one another. It's almost like a little here and a little there, but this, you know, this big part that, you know, is similar. So, so yeah, it's not, it's not work at all. It's basically just, mm -hmm. let's just create music. Yeah, it's a partnership in which you guys have freedom and freedom to create and right. you know how to go back and forth with that right. or to have somebody goes off and the other person follows. And, right. And vice versa. So that, so the people that uh, come to your duo uh, performance on the 10th. Yep. Should, should expect that uh, at the very least. And we've had little musical hints. Um, what is there anything else specific that people should expect they're supposed to they're supposed to be i know i don't know if you, what you're planning to play or what you've even thought about whether you've even thought about that yet or had time mm. Mm. <laughs> I, well, I know when we put i think when we i think we think more about the types of tunes we're doing and less about how they're going to go Mm. like the only time me and steve really will drill a tune um i know we you know drill stuff like if it's a specific head like when we did milestones on one of his quartet records me and him play the melody together okay it can't be a wrong note you got to get that bebop head exactly mm -hmm. usually it's just overarching like what kind of songs do we want to play mm -hmm. and then what key do we want to play it in and then it's just kind of like all right well because i think that's what's more excited about it. Once we learn the song, mm -hmm. then all right, just just play. Um, well, yeah. certainly for that that evening, I would like to hear a live version of Jay and a live version of of Turnin. I'm putting in my request. <laughs> now, um, I, now I got to relearn this. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, Sam, we got to hear some of your CD. No, I know. Yeah, I was. I was going. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to put some stuff on there for sure. Yeah. I wasn't sure about Jay, but maybe. Let me see. I don't even know if I think I might have lost the chart too that I that we wrote <laughs> for the two. It was but, uh, like that one time for like the yeah. record. Yeah, I'm notorious for like getting all these charts together. You know, writing arrangements and different things, and do, and when I make the record, I lose all that stuff. You know, like where is it now? But in, but no, yeah, you, you're gonna I mean, hear. Something. You got to be yeah. fresh all the time. It's crazy, man. Yeah, it's, yeah, I don't know. Well, it's, I trust, the thing is, there are other musicians I mightn't trust. Um, yeah. But the two of you, I, you know, whatever you play, um, that Friday night is going to be um, 
it's just gonna be great. And then the next night um, was originally the Ernest Turner Trio, and then Jason Marsalis is coming on drums and, and Stevens added to that. Um, that's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's real hip, man, because the three of us with Jason, you know, Ernest and Jason have done two records with Steeplechase together, but it's been I a while. Know. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We did uh, the first record Ernest was on with me uh, and Jason's Jason's on most of my, a lot of my records, my earlier wow. records. Uh, but anyway, and, and me and Jason also worked together with Marcus Roberts. So I've known Jason for a long time um, <clears throat> and Ernest just fits right in with that. And uh, the first record we did was El Gaucho, um, mm -hmm. Jason. And then the very the very next project, uh, my next release after that was Lucky Seven, um, with Ernest and, and Jason. So, but it's been a while since we yeah. the three played together. So it's that's going to be interesting too, because you know. Anyway. Well, are you going to yeah. have much? Are you going to have much time to rehearse? Nah. Oh. <laughs> I knew the that was the answer. I just had to ask. I mean, I you guys will figure it out, but that's that's uh, yeah. just a pleasant surprise that Jason was was yeah. was popping up here. Uh, yeah. Though I know he's he's done that before, but yeah, I mean, yeah. It's right? Because I mean, when I played with Jason the most was when I lived in New Orleans. Yeah, you're talking about I've sounded completely different. Yeah, I about that, man. You played with Jason when you lived in New Orleans. Yeah, I mean, it was either with his brother with Delphio. He was on a lot right. of those gigs. So okay. I'm, you're talking about I literally sounded like a completely different person. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then we did Steve's record. You're talking about that's 07 and 08. Yeah. Um, so it should be, I mean, I'm just happy. Uh, I mean, I talk a lot about this with younger musicians that how well you play is important, but the relationships you have with people is equally, yeah. you, know, not, you know, 10 times more important. Yeah. Um, because I was just, you know, I was wondering, would Jason even be interested in traveling out here to do, you know, one night? Uh, but it was just like, a, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, that's the, way, that's the way Jason is, man. He that's just, super he to hear. Loves to play 20 hours a day. He loves to play. So, wow. I'm excited to be able to, you know, have him on the gate. I mean, that's just, you know, uh, that's a treat to kind of do that. Yeah. And I, now, I also noticed, uh, just looking at the, uh, the, the calendar, it's the, there are tickets for the live. There's I don't see anything about any live streams for either of the performances. I don't know if mm. you guys have are, agreed to have it or not. But uh, I think the way that works is I think Dave was telling me something about there's something about they can't even post that until like with whatever streaming service they use. Oh, they got they got to deal with that. Okay. Like yeah. the week of or, or the couple of days before or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, cool. the thing is that if 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 there's a live stream, then if you sell out, people can can then uh, watch you on the live stream. But either way, uh, and I'd recommend to everybody that um, speaking for myself, um, that you get to the live shows of, of these guys playing on the on the tenth and eleventh. You will have. Um, just a really fine musical experience. And then um, if you need to, for, for, then um, will you have some CDs available for sale? Yes, absolutely. Okay. There will be yeah. CDs for the new CD, the duo CD. Yeah, the and then CD. Ernest has his own um, yeah. My America um, CD, which I know is already there at, at, at Sharp Nine. And if anybody wants to go back and and um, find more of, of Stephen's work, just go to Steeplechase Records uh, yeah. for whom he's recorded yeah. an innumerable number of, <laughs> of well, CDs. Yeah, it's crazy, like one a year. Just, and, and I, I've gone back and I, I think of the one of you and Peter Zach, the pianist together, and yeah. it's one of the loveliest recordings I know I've, yeah. I've heard. So it's, there's much to, uh, explore in, in, in Steven's catalog. And then the new CD is out on Seller Live. If you want to go back and tease yourself like we did a bit of today, uh, go to Seller Live, um, Google Seller Live, then search for Stephen Riley 
you can click on the on the CD and it, the uh, a minute and a half of each of the tunes pops up if you want to get yourself yeah. ready for uh, a live performance of some of those things. Yeah. Oh, gentlemen, thank you for your time. I know you're busy guys and <laughs> Ernest is unpacking and Stephen yeah. is, uh, you're doing whatever you're doing down there. Yeah, I'm sitting on the couch drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah. Waking up? Ernest, are you in D.C.? No, I leave on uh, Friday. Yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, you're packing. Unpacking. Yes, yeah. He's unpacking as in a place to live. Okay, is- I'm going to cut this the recording off. Just hang in, hang in there a second. All right. for informal goodbyes. But thanks for your time. Um, and this will get posted uh, sometime probably the week of um, your performances.